Hey, what's going on, YouTube fam? It's Be Righteous from Identity. I got another Outriders discussion for you with some goodies, too. Now, I know I'm not the only one who feels this way, but these Outriders weapons are aesthetically stunning. Destiny has some great looking ones, too, but the concept artists went in on these designs. I mean, they're really outlandish. What I want to know is how relevant these weapons are to their talents, mods, and abilities. Nowadays, especially in the Division 2, and y'all don't crucify me for saying this, I'm just making an observation. I played Division extensively, went through all the updates and patches too, and I can tell you that there have been so many situations where weapons and gear were never used. This caused an oversaturated loot problem, which then made it extremely difficult to get the talents and gear that you actually wanted. Also, with the right roles to fit them, a lot was changed because of that. The gear game was completely revamped. It was called Gear 2.0, where talents were minimized and gear was way more accessible. Some talents were even removed completely from the game, and with some updates, it felt like an entire new game. Even with all that, there are still talents and weapons that aren't used. I think this is why I'm appreciate the fact of Outriders being a title that's not live service. With this being the case, everything is being meticulously worked on because it has to be. So let's take a look at some of these beautiful weapons and how they are actually relevant to builds and gameplay. There's only one Outrider class that has a healing mechanic which caters to most of its class. The Technomancer. The style of play is basically long range support and gadgets, and for using this class, you'll be able to heal yourself a portion based on the damage you deal. All classes have a healing mechanic, but the Technomancer is the only one with abilities that are catered to it more than others. Like the skill called Doctor of Medicine, which increases all healing by 20% for you and your allies. So, my question about the weapons performing as good as they look well, the answer is they have to be. It's very important to me that a game's mechanics be relevant to its gameplay experience. So when looking at some of these weapons, I see how you can synergize so much to create so many different builds and playstyles. I have an awesome example for you right here. Look at this weapon. It's called the Molten Idola, a legendary rifle that is perfect for the Technomancer. First of all, the aesthetics here are, as I said, stunning to say the least but this rifle is a great example of how we will be able to immerse ourselves into the build diversity the base stats on this weapon already cater to the technomancer's healing mechanic and skills these stats i'm sure can be increased if you level it up but what i see here is 13 percent healing received and 12 percent long range damage so just with this alone it already starts the build diversity process because with the sniper master skill it increases your sniper damage by 40 percent and sniper weapons will drop 12 percent more often this applies to all kinds of rifles marksmen's automatic sniper rifles and bolt action so this is best for sitting back dealing insane damage while playing the ultimate support role but healing from dealing damage isn't the only method of survival for the technomancer he's also the only class that has a life steal and yes there's a weapon for that too. It's called the Voodoo Matchmaker. Now it's a legendary assault rifle. And I know that with the Technomancer, it's suggested that you stay back, but this weapon's attributes have 14% life leech and 7% healing received. You get this simply by shooting the enemy. And this is increased by unlocking the Technomancer's class trait. You know, all of these buffs and <laughs> things that you can do with these classes, it got me thinking that this game may be too easy. Now, there are some content creators who play the game already. I don't think they play the world tiers, but there's a lot of things you can do in this game that make you feel so powerful. So I hope it's not too easy. I guess we'll find out in the demo. But by unlocking the class trait, which each class has, by the way, the Technomaster's trait increases long range damage by 7.5%, increases life leech by 15%, and increased weapon life leech by 15%. Oh man, this is this is too much. This means that the 14% you'll receive from the Voodoo Matchmaker Assault Rifle will increase to 29%. Oh boy, and that might even be more depending on how much you can upgrade this. Am I going to have a field day with builds in this game? Now, this is only scratching the surface of what this game has to offer. I just went over two weapons. That's it. And <laughs> only the basic aspects of them. If you notice below, the weapons have a mod system as well. That's what I'll talk about in my next video. I referenced the Technomancer a lot in this segment, and honestly, I like this class, but I got my eyes set on the Devastator. So next time, I'll go over in detail how the mod system works in that class. I'm sure it'll be amazing because the legendary sets just came out. The devs have been releasing information this past week about the four different class sets you can get, so maybe I'll talk about it in regards to that. But when it comes to the Devastator, I don't know about y'all, but it's just something about classes like that, you know? I get a certain type of feeling when I can just go out on the battlefield and establish my dominance, which is why the Titan was my starting class on Destiny back in the day. 
Anyways, I'm glad you clicked on this video and I hope you tune in to my next one. If you haven't checked out my last Outriders videos, then the links are right here. And if you're interested in stuff like this, then please drop a like and don't hesitate to subscribe to my channel if you're new. I'll see you next time. Be right out.